few words about the neck of a guitar. Were you you guys listening to the Ken Parker lecture here? Some of you were. Yeah, I've seen Ken lecture in Belgium a few months ago at a small guitar maker fair. We attended also, and uh, I was uh, thrilled to notice that we share very similar visions about the, the importance of the neck and the stiffness and the bend strength of the neck in, in, a, in a guitar. Even though our approach to building the guitar is completely different, I'm I'm way more conservative than, than Ken. Ken is doing all the epoxy stuff and all the crazy stuff with the graphite and and, and, and those things. And I'm I'm looking things at from on, from the traditional uh, woodcraft perspective. I like my guitars. I mean, it's well. Guitar players are a conservative bunch of people. I would excuse me, but yes, tra very traditional orientated. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I am as well. I mean, I like guitars to look like guitars. I don't like very weird looking guitars. I like them to be sort of guitarish looking, which is curves and sort of. It comes from the um, female something that just we men like about it. <laughs> and um, yeah, back to the neck. So um, I believe very strongly that the neck needs to be very stiff. Um, you know what dead spots mean, right? I'm not talking about the fret buzzing or things like that, but the dead spots where you hit a note and it decays very fast. It just and it dies. And there is no, I mean, why does it? I mean, there is no mechanical thing to in the, in the fret work or something like that. But in fact, there is a very simple solution or simple um, reason for this. The most often reason for the dead spots is uh, is a neck that vibrates too much or vibrates has a has a very clear peak resonances in it. So you may ha might have one note on the neck, you pick it, and the neck starts to vibrate on that frequency and eats out the energy of the string. That's where it goes. That's where the energy goes. That's why it decays so fast. And um, and, and the, usually the problem occurs from octave to octave, the same note does it. And uh, therefore, one, one guitar builder usually, guitar builders usually want to build necks that are strong and, and stiff and don't have these problems, and to avoid it in every way possible. Ken Parker has found a, a, an extremely effective way of doing it. I, I believe I have found as well by using uh, lightweight material that is at the same time very strong and stiff, the Spanish cedar. It's used traditionally by Spanish uh, Spanish guitar, well, uh, classical guitar makers and their necks, and they don't have charge works in their necks. Um, lightweight, good bend strength, um, and then I use a few more special techniques to add to the uh, strength of the neck One thing I could mention is the is the headstock. I, you can't see it looking at the guitar. It looks like a very traditional thing, which I like like it to be that way. But under the hood, it's very different from here, from a Gibson Les Paul guitar. Everyone, everybody who has ever worked as a guitar tech repairing guitars knows where do Les Pauls break. The headstocks keep snapping off. I don't know how many Les Paul headstocks I've repaired, glued back, very many. And Google it and you will find lots of horrible pictures. Um, and the reason why they break like that is the grain run out on this area. See, Gibson uses one piece of mahogany grain running obviously parallel to the neck like this. 
and at this point you have a 17 degree angle and the grain runs out right here and at the same time you are at, at the area where here's the weakest point also because of the truss rod there's a there's a hole there in the wood you have hardly any wood here holding it together and here you have a relatively big chunk of mass with the tuners and uh, added with the tension of the strings pulling this way very much. So it doesn't need a very big hit sometimes. It's surprisingly small uh, amount of energy that is capable of breaking a Les Paul neckline. So what I've done with this guitar, I wanted to maintain the 17 degree angle. That's one of the things that contributes to the tone. I didn't want to alter that in this guitar. I have others that I have made different, but this one I wanted to make old school. Very traditional. Even more traditional than Les Paul. I mean, the, the body form comes from older guitars than that. It's from L5 or Stromberg. Or it's kind of my paying tribute to these great luthiers of all times. Um, with the soft curves and so on. Um, yeah, I've done the neck so that there's a glue glue line here. So first of all, this uh, the, the neck is made of three three slices of wood, like this, to release some tensions out of the wood and uh, make it more stable. And uh, right here is a glue joint, and in the headstock, the grain runs parallel to the headstock. But that's not enough yet. I, I've done also added two maple splines under the headstock veneer right here so they cross over the glue this glue line here so we have maple splines running deep in the neck all the way from the headstock under the fretboard and these combined with the fretboard glued on the splines and the two millimeter ebony veneer glued on the headstock make a multiple laminated construction that is extremely strong. We made a series of videos, me and my wife, for, for the when I was designing the Unicorn guitar. It's, uh, you can find it on YouTube. And we have also, I'm advertising here, we have a DVD of that. Um, it's about two hours of material of the design, and, the design process and the building process of the two first prototypes that I built of the unicorn guitar and um, on one of the videos I'm standing on this neck and it does not break. I, I made also another sort of like a mock-up neck made in the Gibson way with, with the water and, and it, it breaks when I, I couldn't even hardly step on it while it broke. It just saw me, you know, go in there and already it broke. So, uh, but this, the reason, I mean, this is one reason. I wanted to make this guitar stronger better, simply, simple as that, better, it doesn't break that easily. But also, the same laminated constructions uh, adds to the bend strength of the guitar and, and removes, again, some of the unwanted peak resonances of the neck. So the headstock wouldn't wobble on certain frequency and uh, kill the notes 